thank you for having me um thank you for being here and i'm looking forward to uh, show you a little bit of how to create and visualize a story with chat gpt and stable diffusion xl my name is jacques galomo i'm the founder of cream labs ai and i'm looking forward to this small session um just a short and small um, disclaimer i'm no developer so this is going to be a manual <laughs> Manual labor, uh, human-based labor, but of course you can feel free to automate it in any way you want because the possibility is of course there. So, um, just a small glimpse and a little bit of uh, self-promotion. Uh, the images you are seeing here are created with our with our own uh, image generation model, Cream AI, and Cream AI is targeting agencies and marketers, so creative professionals who want to create uh, high quality images with a different kind of interface and optimized an interface, especially for the workflows and day-to-day -day work of creative professionals. And of course, this is all powered by uh, Stable Diffusion. So a big thanks and shout out to Stability AI and to the whole team for making this possible for us to create this product for the creative community. Um, we are in closed beta, but if you want to try it out and want to see how our uh, interface works, how we generate images, feel free to uh, sign up on creamai.de. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's for creative agencies. We won't be open in the future. And so it's just for corporate clients. So please, if you sign up, use your corporate email address. That's it. But enough of the self-promotion. Just one last slide. Uh, we, of course, we do image generation. We provide video tutorials. We provide workshops. And as you can see here, uh, the most important part for today we also plan on integrating an automated storyboard creation workflow. Basically the same thing I wanna talk about today. So I'm opening up for the community to use. Let's start. So what do we wanna to do today? You wanna to create a story and we wanna don't wanna write it ourselves. We want to use, of course, a GPT-4 for that. But we also want to visualize that story and we will use Stable Diffusion XL for that. And of course, if you wanna have a story that is uh, visualized for every scene, we need a constant and uh, consistent style for this. So let's start, right? So first things first, how can we achieve this? We will start with creating the style first. So here our first step, creating the style. Then we will switch over to uh, G uh, GPT, chat GPT, create the story, then create scenes, the plot and the actions in each scene. Uh, uh, fitting to the story and then creating a prompt. And this prompt will also use our prompt we created before. So we will combine our stable diffusion prompt with a prompt that is fitting and connected to the scenes and the plot and the action. And then we will visualize all of this manually, hard labor with stable diffusion XL and create a storyboard finally for our story. So. Let's start up and create that style, right? Okay, so I'm switching over to Dream Studio. Here's Dream Studio. I already played a little bit around with Stable Diffusion XL and I really enjoyed trying it out. It works good with short prompts, but it also works pretty well with long prompts. And as you can see here, my uh, jumping astronaut looks pretty crisp, so a uh, nice one. But for the today story, I wanna um, uh, think about, a, what I wanna create something different, something, and another style, let's say we want to create something in the in a comic book style and the style of a Western cyberpunk uh, direction. So I prepared a short prompt just to test it out. So vector Western cyberpunk style, nothing else. Let's prompt this real quick. Let's generate this real quick and see what uh, Stable Diffusion XL would generate for us and will generate for us. And here are the images. They are looking fine, of course, since we didn't specify anything we didn't specify the person the action the scenery they are pretty different but they're also different in kinds of a uh, visual so style like the colors and even the style itself so i think we can optimize this a little bit so let's try it out and use a different prompt so i will copy it in here here's the second prompt western cyberpunk inspired by digital art western comic style so this is a little bit more precise because i add a little bit more descriptors here let's um generate this as well and we will see that now that since we have a little bit more of a description side in there the style will be more consistent it's not perfect but it's more consistent now we have this black lines everywhere which are of course interesting for this comic book style but i'm not happy with this one right now i think we can try something different because i i saw 
an image of um, a few hours ago I really liked, and um, but I don't have the prompt for this. So what can I do? I can, for example, use Clip Interrogator 2.1. It's a model hosted on Hugging Face. You can just Google it and open it up. Uh, you don't need to log in or register to use this. And you can drop your image. This is the image I really enjoyed to, uh, to see. You can drop your image in there and ask the system to create a corresponding prompt. So it will try to create a prompt that you can then drop into Stable Diffusion to create a similar image. And of course, we can uh, up this here to give it more flavor. Uh, click uh, send and now it will send it as you can see it will take about one minute so that's a little bit long I did this before so I prepared something for you this would be the result and we see at the bottom here our prompt that uh, the clip interrogator created for us and let's use that prompt and try it out so back to dream studio I'm co I'm copying this prompt uh, in here you will see it right now and I'll hit dream and we will see what happens so, as I mentioned before, this prompt was not created by me, it was created by Clip Interrogator. And as you can see, these images are looking pretty uh, similar. Let's prompt some more just to see if there's a really uh, a close, diff a close similarity. And yeah, for my sake, I would say they are similar. Like, take a look at this and take a look at these. They are similar, right? And I will read the prompt for you. So the prompt is, a close-up of a person wearing a hat, a character portrait inspired by Max Magnus Norman, digital art, western comic style, John Wick cartoon style, illustration, warm sundown, portrait of a rugged ranger, styling of Kilian Eng, a handsome fan art. And what you will notice is that there are two um, artists in there, yes? And you, you all... You all noticed, of course, that there's a big discussion about the ethical uh, uh, um, situation of using the names of artists and to copy their style by using their names. And it's important to, of course, of talk about this. And for me, it's important to not copy because that's, I think it's boring. I want to create something for myself. But um, what can we do about these two artists? So let's just check out what their style is. And it's interesting because if you look at Max Magnus Norman, I searched for him and opened up his site. This is his site. And if you look at his art style, it has nothing to do, not at all with the thing we want to create. So as you can see, for me, I have no problem uh, with using his name because there is no similar similarity whatsoever. I cannot copy his style with the prompt I created or clip interrogator created for us. So for me, it's fine to use. It would be fine to use his name. Yeah. Let's head over to our second artist. The second artist is Kilian Eng, and I found his Instagram channel just to check him out as well. And as you can see here on his Instagram channel, it's completely different style of art. So it has nothing to do with what we are cr trying to create. So I'm guessing that Stable Diffusion would p pull some of his characteristics out, but he would not copy the whole style. So from my, from my perspective, it would be fine to use both of the names. But to be honest, I don't think that we need both of them. So let's optimize this prompt a little bit more. So. What I do and what I what I did was changing, deciding on a color because as we just saw here, the color is a little bit consistent, but not that much. We can make it better, right? So I decided to add purple, orange, punk, atmosphere, bright light to make sure that we always have the same kind of color, uh, color atmosphere in the generations. I decided to uh, double down on the sundown. It wasn't a uh, created prompt. But I really wanted to make sure that we have a sundown in almost every scene because the sundown is also generating a strong atmospheric output. And for character consistency, I decided to go with John Wick. Yeah? So it's not he won't be in the prompt as itself, but he will be in the story. So we have a consistent character over all our um, um, generated scenes. And sorry, Magnus, I will throw you out. I don't think that we need two artists in our prompt. We will just use one artist. That would be enough. Of course, you can, if you want, to use a, a negative prompt to optimize the image generation process to show the system what you don't want to see. For example, since I want to have a comic style, I don't want to see a 3D render. I don't want to see a sketch or something messy. We can use this, but we don't have to. We will try it without the negative prompt, but we can try it out later with the prompt. Okay, so, and the result of our changes, of my changes, was that the final 
um, style is this one here. Western cyberpunk inspired by digital art, Western comic style, cartoon style illustration, warm sundown, style of Kian Eng, purple orange punk atmosphere and bright light. And what does the X stand for here? The X stands for the scene, which we later will integrate with ChatGPT, because currently this is just the style prompt, right? And we will try out this style. That's one of the most important things. If you have, for example, a prompt you think could work, you have to try it out. So here's an example. Um, as you can see, we have landscape, Western, cyberpunk, other prompt we already know. And the result is a pretty consistent style here. And it's tried out as well. So let's go back to... Uh, Dream Studio, let's write landscape, try it out live, enter our prompt here, that's separated with the comma real quickly. So I hope this is on the right spot. Yes, and hit Dream and just create something. We can, of course, try out, let's say, a city. Um, let's also say, for example, a, a, let's say a tiger, yeah? a tiger, because you have to try out your... Um, your prompt style with different subjects, different scenes, just to see if the adding multiple, for example, new information to the prompt will change the style. And as you can see here, we still have John Wick in here, so that shouldn't be the case. We should have to throw him out of our style prompt because it's, of course, the style prompt without him. And otherwise he will, as you can see here, just flood the images. Let's try out the tiger again. And of course, we could, for example, say an astronaut as well. Uh, we've saw an astronaut before, so let's write astronaut um, jumping on Mars, like this, for example. And so what we're trying to achieve is we, we are trying to make sure that our style stays consistent no matter what kind of image and um, scenery or action we want to create. And as you can see here, as I scroll up and down, this is similar, right? This is great. And we don't even use the uh, SDXL styles. We can, of course, for example, use the enhanced style. I can try it out again with the enhanced style just to see if we can enhance uh, our visual output, but we don't have to. And I really like to, to work without it because if I work with out style enhancers, which can be useful, by the way, um, I think I have the most of the control over the model because I don't know for now, but it's a question for, for you guys at Stability, um, how these enhancers really work in the background. So since I don't know it, I will try to not use them. But as you can see, they have an impact. And um, so, but now we have a style. We have, we have seen that the style stays consistent here. Uh, we have thrown out John Wick. And the next step would be then to jump to uh, ChatGPT for the story time, okay? And when we jump to ChatGPT, we want ChatGPT to create a story for us. And of course, since we don't have so much time, I uh, uh, made it short, so please, this is the prompt, please just create a two paragraph short cyberpunk Western story with a showdown. It should have one main character, cowboy, cyber cowboy John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, and add a shocking twist at the end. So this is my short or our short prompt for today. Let's switch over to um, GPT-4 here. As you can see, we chose GPT-4 for this. And uh, let's drop in the prompt here. Of course, what you could do is you could, of course, just ask your um, users to fill in, for example, certain parts of this prompt. Let's say, for example, um, this uh, element with the showdown, the cyberpunk western story. This is also something your users could um, enter here. So let's enter. And now we have to wait because sadly, GPT-4 is a lot slower than GPT-3.5. So it takes a little bit of time, but I will fill that time with reading a little bit of that story. So under the crimson sky of a dying sun, the dusty streets of Neo Tombstone were deserted. Safe for the lone figure of cyber cowboy John Wick. His boots made a mutated crunch on the gravel as he walked, the servers on his cybernetic limbs wiring softly. The once thriving city had fallen to ruin under the relentless rule of the notorious outlaw gang, the Cyber Skull Raiders. John had come to settle the score, and the townsfolk cowered in their homes, anticipating the showdown that was about to commence. And this is the, basically the whole story. So, um, 
Um, this is uh, uh, very interesting to see how um, GPT-4 really creates this. Let's jump down to the fin fina finale. So the Cyber Skull leader approached the fallen hero, slowly lifting his helmet to reveal his face. John eyes, uh, John's eyes widened in shock as he started into the face, start into the face of his own brother, a man he had long beloved to be dead. The relation hit him harder than any bullet ever could. So basically, the showdown ended with uh, the desired twist at the end. Somehow, um, he killed his own brother. Really sad. But this is our story now. So what can we do with our story? We can, of course, use a second prompt, which I will show you now. And this is this one, the table prompt. So let's change this story into a clean table with this one. And of course, it's a long prompt, so I have to read it for you. So perfect. Thank you, ChatGPT. Now create a table to display the story. Column one is for the scene number. You can cut the text at an appropriate parts to make more scenes. So giving uh, ChatGPT the freedom to cut this uh, text however it feels necessary. Column two is for the story. And column three is for the scene description, so our uh, future prompt. This is important. The scene description will be an image generation prompt, which is compromised, comprised of this style description. First, start with the location. And always add the location, even if the location was mentioned before. It's important because every prompt should be complete. Add the camera angle and the action. Every time Wick or John Wick is mentioned, you will add his appearance like this. John Wick. Keanu Reeves, dressed in black, wearing a hat and black coat, white shirt. So for us to make sure that every time we prompt an image with Keanu Reeves, with John Wick, we have the same description for him. So he wears, uh, wears the same clothing, right? And of course, always end with this text. And now comes our style prompt. Western cyberpunk inspired by digital art, Western comic style, etc., etc. But in the end, after the bright light... If another character is mentioned, describe his appearance in short detail. And this is our now task for ChatGPT to do. So create three columns, one for numbering, one for the story, and one for the prompt. And of course, it's a little bit of a longer prompt, but it will work. Let's paste it in here. Uh, let's just get rid of this small elements here. I think, don't think that we need those. Let's see if this works. So... Just a second. Yeah, here. Perfect. So, and let's hit generate. And this will take some time now. Let's see So, if this works. Okay, he's understanding, creating the table. Now we have, of course, the first scene. Now he will write the first part of the story and will decide on itself where he cuts here. And as we can see, he found his first cut. And now we get the scene description on the right-hand side. And I will read the scene description for you. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that you can read it as well. New Tombstone Streets, wide angle view, John Wick, Keanu Reeves, dressed in black, wearing hat, black coat, white shirt, walking alone. And then we end with our style prompt. So this is basically our scene description, which was created by this part here. And the, la the last part of this prompt is our style prompt here. And what we can do right now is just copy this while GPT-4 is writing the rest of the story. Go back to Dream Studio, paste it here, and test how this will look. Let's just not create four. Let's create eight images. Let's create eight more images, and we will see. So here he is, our lone, lone wolf. Um, looking good, um, just entering the city, basically. Here we see him. So now we can, of course, choose which kind of imagery we would like to use. And your users would ideally see all eight or all four images and then just pick the one they want to use and then um, accept or, um, yes, uh, insert, insert this picture into their storyboard. That would be their workflow. Let's check out the next one. So close up of John Wick, Keanu Reeves. Boots crunching gravel, servos in his cybernetic limbs, wiring, western cyberpunk inspired by digital art. Okay, let's try out this one. It's a difficult one because it's about his appearance. And you will see if this wall works. Okay. So, and this is basically the workflow you can do. Of course, automated, highly automated. And we see here he is. Here we have his work boots. 
crunching gravel like it, uh, it was described. Let's ch just ch check back. Here's the sentence from the story. His boots made a muted a crunch on the gravel as he walked, the servos in his cybernetic limbs wiring softly. And we got exactly what we needed, the image of his boots. So wonderful. Let's check the next one. The once thriving city had fallen to ruin under the relentless rule of the notorious outlaw gang, the Cyberscar Raiders. And of course, our prompt, panoramic view of the ruined Neo Tombstone city. Let's check this one out as well and generate some kind of eight images. And we will see that, or I hope so, that we will see that these images also work pretty well. Always calm before the storm. And here we see the ruins of Neo Tombstone looking pretty great. And now you will see that these are all in the same style. So we are working on the right direction. It's working pretty much. And now we can move on and on and on. And the great thing is that here, as you can see, um, ChatGPT finished the whole complete story. It can happen that if you want to try this, um, you're running into a, um, a token limit and ChatGPT just stops mid-sentence somewhere here in one of the scenes, then just write continue and it will continue and it will keep on prompting. So this is a possibility. Okay, but as you can see, this is basically the workflow. So finding a good prompt, optimizing that prompt for um, a multiple usage with different scenes, with different kind of objects, with different um, characters, and then using that to create your own visuals with, of course, the API for in your case. So let's check this out. Here's uh, the table I created just as a test and advance. And then of course the SD creation. So with SDXL here were some of my tests and of course the storyboard. So here, this is an uh, older version of this. As you can see here on the left hand side, the um, story description in the middle, the prompt that was automatically created and on the right hand side, the images that Stable Diffusion created for me for that story. So a really interesting case, um, uh, pretty fast to achieve. Um, I would advise you if you want to create a certain style to really test the style out. So not just uh, write one word um, and say, okay, that's fine, that's enough. Really test that style out, bring it to the limit um, to create simple, um, small, small um, scenes, create big scenes and really try to find especially the right spot where to place your um, scene uh, prompt. So basically um, this element here for your, you know, let's see here, this one here for your um, style, um, because it can be at the beginning, of course, but it can also be in the middle or at the end. And I have another, um, another prompt for you. I will just throw it into here real quick so that you can see it. And it's basically the same at the beginning. But here I have the X, um, as you can see the X in here, and this X uh, is marked as the variable. And in the next uh, the next part of the prompt, I am asking ChatGPT to insert my the description of the scene where the X is. And so as a result, I can move this X to any part of my story. So basically on my prompt, for example, in the middle, if I want to have more weight on this initial uh, description of the style, of course, this is possible, but this will result in the description of uh, the scene getting a little bit less weight. I tried this out. So if you move the X at the end, for example, the style would be, would be better, but the description of the scene, so the action, the plot in the scene would be a bit difficult or for, uh, more difficult for the system to create. So you can move um, the uh, scene around. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If you want to try it out for now today, you can, of course, just uh, prompt a style into, uh, into the chat. Uh, tell me what style we can try out. And if you have any questions, then um, ask them and we can try to solve them together. Um, of course, uh, thanks you, thank you for mentioning that I have a LinkedIn profile. So if you're interested, head over and follow me on LinkedIn because I'm... Um, sharing um, insights on AI generative systems, uh, new technologies uh, daily on my LinkedIn profile. So feel free to follow me there and um, be on the, on the wave and <laughs> um, getting all the information on the news uh, on the day they are released. Okay. 
thank you. And I would love to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Frank. I really see that people are concerned about using John Wick for this. Uh, and they wrote that nobody can change the view of John Wick. So, but I don't think that it's concerned. They are just excited as well. It was really interesting to follow how you can in 30 minutes create a complete story actually using just two of the AI tools. That's really awesome. And um, I'm trying to check to check all the questions. I didn't notice any specific for the uh, for the talk itself. Guys, in case you have some questions to the talk, please feel free to write it right now so we'll be able to ask them on the live stream. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there technical terms you can use for uh, consistent results or is it usually trial and error or a case by case basis? Um, there are no technical technical terms for this, so it depends on the style you want to create. If you want to create, for example, a style that is highly realistic, you would need completely different terms than, for example, like this illustrated one. Um, to be to, to to make it easier for you to create um, to find a right prompt, I would encourage you to use Clip Interrogator really to just. Uh, Throw in an image, for example, if you have, for example, like, let's say you have a movie scene you really like, you want to wanna try to get as close as possible to that movie scene. So then just make a screenshot, throw it into Clip Interrogator, see what comes out, throw this into Dream Studio here, and then you, will, you can try to optimize your prompt by um, getting rid of certain parts, adding certain parts, um, always try to think about how you would describe the style to someone else, basically to another human, to a colleague of yours. How would you describe the style to a colleague? For example, is this more, is, does this movie have like a light, slight greenish atmosphere? Let's, I'm just thinking about the Matrix, the first Matrix movies, for example. It has like a, a slightly greenish atmosphere. There's a little bit of noise in there. And um, these descriptions, which you would, you, would you, which you would, would use to describe this uh, style to another human, you can as well throw them in here. But the um, art is to use as less words as possible but to describe in the same uh, moment as detailed as possible. Because if your scene description, or a style description, sorry, if your style description um, gets too long and you add a scene uh, to this, um, it can be difficult for the system, uh, for uh, the model to get everything right. So the shorter the style, the more weight will also, the more attention will be on the scene itself. And that's why you should try to get the styles as short as possible. But of course, if you want to, for example, have a cinematic style, you can use words like cinematic, movie. You can even try to um, uh, prompt into the direction of a certain movie. For example, let's say in the style of the movie Dune, you know, for example, would be also possible. But um, it's basically, I, I would encourage you to try it out for yourself to really think, how would I describe this picture if I would have to show it to someone or if I wouldn't be able to show it to someone? But um, tell someone about the style of this picture, for example, over a phone. This is the way how you can work towards creating this uh, perfect prompt for a um, style you can use many times. One more question I see that, uh, is it a good way using the comma to define styles before the subject in order to create storyboard? It can help basically for you, for yourself to just um, sort certain parts of the prompt into different, let's say, um, ar areas or parts. Um, there is a, a, a big dis discussion about commas not being useful or commas being useful. I just uh, saw this com uh, uh, this uh, uh, the comment that um, they are just basically noise. Um, basically, yes, but they determine, they change the style of the image. So if you don't use commas, the image will look different. So um, even if they are just noise, for me, I use them because it's much more easier for me to just uh, uh, separate certain parts of the prompt. But of course, you can prompt with outcomes uh, points as well. I guess it's even a very good question for people that are from Stability AI still here on the call. Will commas really impact on the image style that will be generated? In case, guys, you are able to ask, uh, to answer, sorry. Feel free to do so. 
Okay. And uh, one more question I want to ask. Do you have better results with conceptual description or concretes? I think it depends on the model. Uh, really depends on the model. Um, there are there are models out there that where you can of course uh, feed the model with a lot of more of description, even full sentences. But I, I think in the end it's not important if you use the one or the other. It's more important for you as a creator um, to understand how models in general work and just to get a general understanding to then optimize your art of prompting uh, regarding to the model you're using. So it's really, it's not just about uh, learning this and just focusing on that one rule. It's more about getting a feeling of being adaptable to the rules the model um, um, creates for you. Basically just getting, getting to know their language. Could you please once again repeat the name of the tool that helps you generate prompts? Yes, sure. It's Clip Interrogator. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm sure it was um, again in the in the chat, but it will be saved on our talk will be saved. So guys, you may just simply go and check once again. That's completely, yeah. completely fine. Okay, and mm -hmm. I have one last question really quick. Uh, I know that you are working very close with design. So how do you actually use stable diffusion model on your daily basis and on your work? If you use it, of course course i'm using it so but for me currently since uh, we are we are focused mostly on cream ai so i'm not using it uh, for projects but f just testing it daily and optimizing um, our styles or um, and of course our system daily for get, to get better results um, but um, as a creative i currently use these models to um, test out ideas quickly to just get uh, rough sketches rough iterations to basically just um um, pitch ideas, of course, try them out, um, optimize, and um, to get to uh, from one to 100 quickly, more quickly than before. And that here it's uh, very helpful. Of course, I use them, for example, for creating the visuals for my LinkedIn prompts, uh, link, sorry, LinkedIn posts. And uh, there they are also very helpful. And um, I, I think the most important part it's not it's not about if you use them right now for for example client projects it could be done and there's a lot of a um, lot of companies out there who are already using uh, um, ai generated visuals for um, advertising campaigns and um, that's fine and that's the right direction um, but i think that a lot of the models are not they are really short before uh, um, just a few steps before prime time so they're not perfect uh, but they're really almost perfect and i think that when these models are perfect and you will start to use them then it's too late so uh, all of you who are, who are here today congratulations you did the right thing um really uh, diving deep um using the models right now because when the time has, has come that these models can be used really on a grand scale on a daily basis um, then you should be uh, should have the experience already.